Hello and welcome everybody. This is Roland from graphicinmotion.com and this is part two of our Helium 3D data visualization tutorial. In the first part, if you didn't see it yet, uh, we created this setup that you can see here. So I would recommend before you watch this part that you go back and watch part one. And in this part, we are now focusing on the animation and we will create a nice build-up animation for all of these 3D elements. As you already saw in the last tutorial, we already created this animation for our text and now it's time to animate the other elements that we have in our scene. So I want to start out with the lines in our background. To animate these lines, I will quickly make my helium lines visible, this layer, and I will hide my helium main layer to focus on my lines that I've got here. And now let me just reposition my camera a little bit so that we can see what's going on here. And we can animate this simply by animating the size of our cubes. Uh, as you remember, these lines are made out of cubes and I can, of course, animate the scale using this null here. So let's just take a look at the scale. And if I unlink this and animate the scale on the X value, then you see that we get this kind of an animation. So let's set up a quick animation here. And let's set this to zero on frame number 10. Then I move forward 10 frames set it to 100 and that the animation is not that boring I would just change this a little bit so let's create a little bit of a more interesting curve here let's take a look how this looks like it's a nice short animation but actually I do not want that all of these lines animate at once. I want them to animate one after the other. And there is a really cool feature in Helium. And if we take a look here at our settings in the cloner, you see this motion delay. And if I go into the middle of our animation and increase the motion delay, so let's say we put it to 50. And now you see what this is doing. This is actually offsetting the animation that you put to your primitives or to your 3D objects. And this works with I guess all of the cloners in Helium. I'm not quite sure whether each of the cloner types has this has this option, but I think so. So let's take a look what it does if I set it to 50. Now you see we have this animation, which is definitely way cooler. And maybe if I increase this to 100, then the offset will be a little bit stronger. This is also very nice. Let's say 150. And now, yeah, this looks pretty cool. And there's another option. If you don't want these to offset sequentially, you can change this here from sequence to random, and then you will get a random animation, which is also cool, but in my case, I want it to be a sequence. Okay, um, but actually I want this to go from the top to the bottom. So what I will do is I will quickly rotate my cloner 180 degrees, and now I have the right direction of my animation. Good. So let's go back to my main helium layer and let's take a look how we can animate the other elements here. So um, to animate these big ones, that's pretty straightforward. You just have to animate the scale of these nulls. Uh, I showed you this before that I set the scale here or the size by changing the Y scale. So I can create a pretty simple animation here with these. So let's see. Let's also start on frame number 10. Let's set a keyframe here to zero. Let's move forward 10 frames. This was 450. And this way you can animate these elements. So I could do the same now for all of these nulls, but that's kind of a homework for you. You can do this yourself. One thing that I can recommend, if you want to add some more interesting animation to this because if we take a look for example at our text this is nicely jumping and wiggling and there is a really nice secondary motion in this animation if you take a look here actually it's not that obvious on this animation but many of these text animations have this nice overshoots and if you want to add this to your animations there's a little quick or side tip here there is this website from Dan Abbott's. It's called Motion Scripts. And if you go to the bounce and overshoot, you will find this keyframe overshoot expression. It's very complicated, but you can just grab it, copy it, go to After Effects. On your keyframed animation, hold down 
Alt and click the stopwatch and then just paste it in. And if you take a look now at our animation here, I get this nice overshoot here. So this is a pretty cool way how you can create more interesting animations um, with very little effort. Good, so now let's take a look how we can animate these other objects that we have. So we have this little icon here and actually I can do a very similar animation here. So I will just go to my icon and also will animate the scale here. So maybe this starts at, let's say, frame 20. Let's animate this scale overall. So let's make this a little bit longer maybe and set it back to zero. And now I will again use my expression and just copy it in here, but this time I want to change the decay a little bit. If I increase the decay, then this will overshoot not that much. And you can actually also take a look at these animation curves. Um, so if I activate this, you see now this is my overshoot. And if I change the decay now, for example, to two, you will see that this overshoot is very bouncy. So by changing the decay value here in this expression, you can change the overshoot and create some bouncy animations. So let's do it like this and let's see how this looks like. Pretty cool. Maybe it's a little bit too slow. Let's make this also a little bit faster. That all of these animations are kind of fast happening fast. Yeah, that's good. Now I want to animate my spline here in the background. And actually what we could do, we could create a second spline, just that we have something in here. So let's do that quickly. Let's go to Helium, let's go to our spline and duplicate it. Duplicate it, create a second spline, make this one, take over the blue here. And of course we also have to create a second path, so duplicate this path layer and let's rename it to path number two. And I will just change this a little bit. So let's make something like maybe uh, such a step curve, maybe something like that. Okay. Now let's go to our helium layer and let's assign this to our second spline here. So the part number two, and we can go back to our composition. And now it is already visible. I want to create another spline null. So let's duplicate this also. And let's assign this here as well, because then I can offset it. And then we have two splines, and then we can animate these. So let's go to spline number two. Let's go to the spline path here, spline number two, and offset it a little bit, like so. And this looks good. So how can we animate these splines? That's pretty simple. Let's just select our helium main layer. And on the splines, you see that we have this trim option here. And this is what you can animate. And this way you can animate a nice build-up animation. What you also can do is you can offset them. So you can just create like a, a small part of the spline and then offset it using this offset value. This way you can animate very interesting spline animations. But in my case, I don't want to offset it. I will just use the trim to animate this spline. So let's do that. Let's set it to zero. Oh, let's set it to 100 actually in the beginning. And let's set a keyframe here. Move forward 10 frames and set it to zero. Now let's take a look at this animation here. I could actually ease this. So shift F9 and I ease into this last keyframe here. Now I can copy this animation, go to my spline number two and let's search for the trim here for the second one and just paste these keyframes and now let's offset them a little bit let's see whether they are too fast or too slow actually i think these are a little bit too fast so let's just extend these a little bit that these animations are a little bit longer Okay. Now, the last element that we have to animate are these pie charts here. And I want to animate this angle. And actually we can do that. So we can just take a look at our tubes and you see that we have this angle that we can, of course, animate. So let's create this animation. So let's start with our tube number one and let's 
let's set a keyframe here. Let's move back 20 frames and set it to zero. Let's take a look at this curve. So this is my angle here. And I also want this to be a little bit more interesting. So I have another one here and I think that this is this one here. Let's see the scale. No, it was my icon scale. Yes. Let's turn this off. Let's go to the angle. And here I also want to create a bit of an ease. So let's do it like this. Maybe something like that to create a bit more interesting animations here. Yeah, that's good. So let's do something similar here for the other tubes quickly. I will set up a keyframe here for the angle and let's do it for this one as well. And then back here we will set these to zero and to zero, reveal the keyframes, and let's set up let's set up the eases here. So I will just ease into that one and ease out of that one and increase these curves a bit. And let's do the same for tube number three. So let's see this one here. Okay. And now we can just offset these a bit. Let's take a look what this does. This is actually good, but I think that the offset is too much, so we'll just shift them back a little bit. There is one slight problem that I can see here, and this is in the beginning here. You see that we have these layers here, that flat parts of our tube, and I really don't want to see them. So what I can do is I just animate my scale here. So on tube number one, I will just animate the scale, set it to 100, and then one frame before I will set it to zero, and then this will disappear and we can do the same here tube number two that way we can fix this so let's do the next one scale and set it to zero okay now you see that in the beginning these are not visible Okay, now let's improve the look of this a little bit. So to improve the look, first of all, let me quickly create a camera position that is nice. So I will just do something like that. Let me quickly take a look at my action safe area so that we have this more or less in the middle here. Maybe we dolly out a tiny bit. Yeah, this is not too bad. Looks quite good. Now let's increase the resolution here to full to see what we have. And we also want to make sure that our elements are not overlapping. This could cause some problems. So if we take a look, especially at our tubes, so if we go to the side view for a moment, let's go or to the front view and let's take a look here. You see they are overlapping and this can cause some problems when you're rendering. So make sure that this is not overlapping and we can do this by just um, correcting our numbers here a little bit. So let's take a quick look which positions here we have here. And I think if I put this to 450 or to 440, yeah, this was the right value, then this overlap is gone. And I can do the same here. So let's see what value we have here. I think I have to put this to 400. No, it was too much. So then it's probably 410. And then we have it sitting on here, yeah, without any intersections. So this is important. Uh, we have no active camera, custom view. So we should create a camera here. 
I have this Helium camera, but I don't want to use it. I want to set up my own camera. And I want to use a camera, set up a camera from this custom view. And I can do this by going to view and just create camera from 3D view. Now I have the camera in here. Make sure that it covers your whole composition and now you can activate it. Now we are inside this camera. Let's set up a quick animation on the camera as well. And therefore I will quickly create a camera orbit null right here. And let's set these up. They have the same color. And let's just create a quick animation here on the Y rotation. So I will set this up from minus 10 to let's say maybe three seconds. And then we go to plus five degrees, just a slight rotation. I forgot to set keyframes. So five minus 10, easy ease these, press F9. Now we have a slight rotation animation while this is building up. Okay. That's good. And last but not least, let's take a quick look uh, on our lighting. So I will turn off this and I will also turn off my null objects for now because they are a little bit irritating here. So let's turn them off. We don't need them now. Okay, so this is better. And now let's take a look at our light here. The standard light that Helium created is a point light. But if you create a parallel light or a spotlight, then you also can cast some shadows. And you see this immediately changes it. And if I put on shadows or turn on shadows, you see now I'm casting shadows. So I have to position my light a little bit better. And therefore, I will quickly go to a bit of another view here. So let's bring this into the middle here. Let's bring this up a little bit. And now we can change the angle here maybe. Oh, let's see how this looks like. And this actually doesn't look too bad. We have some nice shadows here. Yeah, that's okay. And as a last step of this tutorial, let's take a look at the finished project. I already prepared one, so let's open this up. And I will create a quick RAM preview, and then we will see what we have got here. Okay, so the RAM preview is finished, and you can take a look at our final animation. I think that it came out pretty good. And especially for the short time that we had to invest. So this is really the strength of Helium, that it's really easy and simple to create quick 3D setups in After Effects. So I hope that you had fun with these two tutorials, that you learned something, and that you will create nice projects with the techniques that I showed you. Thank you very much for watching, and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.